Hi there, I'm Drew Badger, the world's number one English fluency guide, and in this important and special video, I'm going to give you a different kind of fluency training to help you become a fluent English speaker much, much faster. And it's called an English fluency power story. Let's begin. This is something new I've been experimenting with, and I'm really excited to try it in this video just to see what your reaction is. I'm almost tempted to include it with Master English Conversation because it's just such a great way to learn, but like most of the things that we introduce, I like to give it to everyone first just to see what people think about it. So a power story is kind of combining a lot of different elements that help you improve your fluency in many different ways and at many different levels, but the general idea is that you kind of take two stories and combine bind them together, but you learn how native speakers actually understand and learn vocabulary and then apply that vocabulary to different things. Now, I don't want to make this lesson too long, so what I'm going to do is just kind of give you an overview of how a power story works without giving you like too long of an example again but let's get into it. Now, what I'm going to do is actually take uh, baseball as an example with kind of a romantic encounter with somebody else and tell two different stories, but I'll begin with how we take uh, some kind of everyday vocabulary that comes from baseball and then apply it as a native speaker does in a conversation when talking about a relationship. Now, I was a baseball player, and just to kind of give you a, an everyday sense of what I did, like I would be maybe kind of up to bat, uh, and this means like you're, you're kind of like coming up to bat, you're waiting in the dugout and the dugout is just like the kind of, uh, area where your team is sitting. But when you're up to bat, uh, you come up and you get to like swing at a few pitches. And if you're familiar with baseball uh, or you've ever seen a game or even played in a game yourself, uh, you'll probably hear like some of the phrases that I'll talk about in this video. So when I'm just coming up to bat, like usually I'm uh, standing on deck. So on deck just means you're waiting uh, for something to happen. You will have a, like the actual batter that's in the batter's box. So a baseball diamond, you've got like a diamond with like home plate, first, second, third base and then home plate again. And the general idea of the game is to hit the ball and then run around the bases. So if you're not familiar uh, at all with baseball, that's really the point of the game. So that's how you score points or in baseball, they're called runs. So you're scoring a run. So uh, you will have somebody that's in the batter's box that's actually the one batting. And then you have somebody that's on deck, which is the next person that's about to go into the batter's box. So I'm on deck. So if I'm on, I'm like kind of on deck and I'm practicing my swing a little bit, I'm preparing and then I get to go up into the batter's box when it's my turn. Now, maybe I like look at the ball when it's coming and I swing and I miss, I swing and I miss. So I'm kind of taking, uh, like I'm looking for like my pitch. I'm looking for something that's like really good, like something that's appropriate for me, uh, like I like a low fastball. So if I get a low fastball, I can swing and I hit it. And if I hit it really well, maybe I get to first base. So this means I hit the ball and I was able to run to first base. Now getting to first base is something that, well, it's maybe not uh, such an amazing thing. It's a good hit. It's good to get like just a, like a good hit. You're getting to first base, but it's not like getting all the way around the bases. But maybe the next time, so I'm on deck again and I'm thinking, all right, like it's like I'm coming around to my chance to bat again. And I'm thinking, wow, if I can get to second base this time, if I can hit a double, that would be even better. So I'm again looking for my pitch. I'm looking for something that's appropriate for me. And the pitcher throws me a nice, beautiful, low fastball and I hit it again and I get to second base. So I'm getting to second base and wow, I'm really excited because I hit a double. The same thing happens again later on in the game. Uh, there are usually nine innings in a baseball game. So maybe at the top of the first inning, that's the very, the very beginning of the game. Uh, an inning in baseball is kind of a, like, uh, it's kind of like a quarter in basketball or any other sport. You just divide it up by uh, maybe the home team getting to play for a little bit and then the away team getting to play. Actually, it's kind of it's backwards. The home team uh, goes second and the away team goes first. So like the kind of visitors or the home team, uh, they, they alternate within each inning. So after you have the top and then the bottom of the inning and then you go through all nine innings unless you have a tie. Now, don't worry about like remembering all of this vocabulary. I'm giving a quick overview of... Kind of baseball and how it works, but just listen carefully to the words I'm using. 
So again, we had like uh, maybe when I'm uh, I'm on the home team. So in the bottom of the first inning, uh, I like get that single. So I get to first base, and then maybe a couple innings later, I hit a double. Then later, I hit a triple. So that means I run all the way first base, second base, third base. I get to third base, and oh, I'm so close to getting back home. I get to third base, and I'm so close to getting back home. So the final uh, maybe time I come up to bat and people usually get maybe three or four at bats or three or four chances to hit a ball uh, or hit the ball in a game. So maybe you get more, maybe you get less, but on average, it's something like that. So you might come around and on my fourth time, I'm really excited. So I'm on deck, I'm waiting, I'm practicing my swing. And then when I walk up to the batter's box, I get prepared. I can hear the crowd. Everybody's really excited. And like the pitcher again throws me that low fast ball and I hit it. Wow. I connect a really great hit and I get a home run, a home run. So I hit the ball out of the park and I get to nicely, easily jog around the bases because I'm the hero and I hit a home run. So I got back to home plate, like home plate, home plate. So this is just me describing uh, an everyday thing uh, the way we would talk about baseball. And these are all just just regular phrases that are from the game of baseball that will be applied uh, to other things in life, which is what I'll do in a second. So maybe in the bottom of the ninth, again, we've got the innings, like the top of the inning and the bottom, the top of the second inning, the bottom of the second inning, and up until the ninth. So in the bottom of the ninth, uh, and many like young, you know, kids, they, they fantasize about like being in the World Series game. So this is the biggest game uh, in baseball uh, in the United States. So this is at the end of the season, like which team is the best. So people talk about, well, it's the bottom of the ninth and I hit like a home run and I get to win the game for my team. So again, I'm just describing some different things like being on deck, which means you're coming up before somebody else. Like, uh, like I have, I'm like next up to come up to bat or I'm maybe hitting a single or a double or a triple and getting to different bases on the field. Uh, or if I hit a home run, it's like something amazing I did where I get to come back and I score a run for my team all by myself. Now, there are more ways to describe this and even more vocabulary, you know, words and expressions, but I just wanted to give you a kind of overview about this. Now, what I'm going to do now is create this with or take kind of apply these things and apply them to a, a conversation or a story about dating. So like right now, uh, I'm going to describe maybe there was this time I was, uh, so I was at a bar, uh, maybe it was like a nightclub or something, but I'm, I'm getting there. I'm like a little bit nervous. I'm kind of, you know, kind of a shy guy, but I walk in and I see like, you know, some people talking to, uh, like the, like some friends of mine, they're also talking with some group of women that we met. And so I'm kind of shy and I'm standing back and I kind of think of myself as like being on deck. So I'm on deck to speak like I'm maybe like they're talking about something, but I'm, I'm getting the courage to approach and maybe to like to start talking with someone. So it's, you know, it's early in the night. It's like the top of the first inning uh, and I'm talking with different, different people. But then there's like one girl that I really want to speak with. And so finally I get to like speak with her and we're talking a little bit and I'm a little maybe kind of awkward. She's like throwing me a few pitches and I think like, well, like, like maybe I didn't express myself very well or I made some mistakes or just, you know, I sounded like kind of silly. But then she threw me something that I really liked and I was able to hit uh, like a single with it. And this just means like I was able to connect with something uh, in like a way that like she laughed at that story I said or something in that way. Now, when we're talking about this is just kind of breaking out of the story for a little bit. Uh, but people, when they're often talking about having a physical connection with someone, uh, men in particular will be talking about like, how far did you go with a particular girl? So maybe the next day I like talk with my friends after I have, have a good connection with that girl. And maybe I go back to her place or something. Uh, but they're asking me like, oh, how far did you get? Like, did you get to first base with her? Did you get to second base? Did you get to third base with her? So maybe first base, getting to first base with someone just means like maybe a little bit of kissing or something. Getting to second base means like a little bit more action, you know, something like that. Getting to third base and getting all the way home. If you hit a home run with someone like, well, I probably don't need to tell you what that means, but like, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'll leave it there. But anyway, uh, so I'm talking with these, these people and like, these are different ways of taking this. And again, 
I don't want to give like a really long story or try to explain a lot, but you can see how I'm, I'm using the vocabulary from the first story, just showing the practical origin of it, but then showing you how uh, these things can be applied in an actual conversation and how people use them. So they're taking baseball references or sports references and applying them in that way. So maybe I'm getting like, I'm kind of like playing catch with a girl. So I'm like, we're talking about the actual conversation going back and forth. So maybe she's throwing me the ball, like she's saying something to me, but maybe I drop the ball. So I say something like, oh no, like I say something stupid or embarrassing. And you know, I just feel a little bit silly about that. So this is like, again, a term for talking about making a mistake from baseball where you drop the ball. So someone throws you the ball or the ball is hit and you try to catch it, but you drop the ball. This is where we get people talking about like making a, a mistake in business. So wow, I really like dropped the ball with something. I was talking with this girl and then I said something stupid. I like told her about my ex-girlfriend and I really dropped the ball with that one. So this is also an expression from American football because you're trying to hold the ball. And if you drop the ball, you're making a mistake. So when you're listening for these things, and again, I don't want to give you too much information, uh, but where you can just take these ideas about uh, like sports or something, and, and it, it really translates nicely and easily to everyday conversations when we're talking about something in a more native way. And we're showing that we understand these references when we're having a conversation. And this is what kind of indicates or shows that we are native speakers. So if I can talk about these things instead of saying, oh, I made a mistake with a girl, I can say, oh, I dropped the ball. Or like it was the end of the evening or it was the bottom of the ninth. So I was talking with this girl and she had to go very soon. It was the bottom of the ninth. I had to like get her phone number from her before she left with her friends or something. And I was able to get it. Or I talk about like how physically intimate I was with someone like, yeah, man, we, we had a great night and like I got to first base or something. So I was able to give her a kiss good night or something else. Like I got a nice hug from her. And these are again, different ways of taking something from one story or one area of life and applying them to something else. But again, I don't want to give you too much information, but I just wanted to share with you, uh, what an English fluency power story is like and the way you're taking something by first learning the practical origin of it and then seeing what it's like in in a kind of everyday sense that really has nothing to do with that thing, uh, but the kind of messages uh, or the metaphors or the ways of describing that thing really translate easily to something else. If you have enjoyed this video, do click that like button. If you have not enjoyed this video, feel free to click the dislike button, but let me know why you didn't, because that helps me produce better videos. And if you'd like to see more English fluency power stories, do let me know. Well, that's it for this video. Again, click that like button, become a subscriber to the YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you'd like to learn more innovative ways to improve your English, whether it's maybe developing better vocabulary or actually learning to remember what you learn, uh, all of these things we can help you with absolutely free at EnglishAnyone.com. And if you click on the link in this video, you can take our free English fluency quiz, and this will give you exactly what you need to learn in order to develop for your particular situation. And I look forward to helping you with the, uh, helping you with that absolutely free at EnglishAnyone.com. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and I wish you a fantastic day. Bye-bye.